What is up, party people? Getting back to the van build and some of the more woodworky business is happening. This week, we're talking about the upper cupboards, or at the very least, starting the upper cupboards, because it actually took me quite a long time to get them finished. I kind of didn't want to do them at the time that I did them, because they seemed like one of the trickier bits of woodworking in, in the build, and I still wasn't very experienced at this point, so it was quite intimidating. And a lot of the videos and information you can find out there are pretty terrible for a noob, because they just involve way too much tools and experience and knowledge and perfectionism, I guess, too. I definitely saw a video that said you needed like a table saw and some other thing and another thing and it was like it was it was emphatic about the fact that you absolutely needed these things to make these cupboards and that if you didn't have them you just couldn't do it and obviously that's not true you're just not going to get a perfect professional job but i never wanted that so it didn't really matter that much as with a lot of the build some of the most helpful videos that i found was a channel called camper vibe who i would thoroughly recommend they're a lot of fun and their van build videos are really useful despite the fact that they come from someone who does know what they're doing they still approach things in a very straightforward and easy to understand way don't over complicate things for no reason i really like louisa's style and their videos are just great and that's definitely how i modeled my approach although i did simplify what i was doing a little bit the first step was sort of determining the dimensions that the covers were going to be the height from the base, where the base was going to sit. I kind of already knew where the base was going to sit because I'd, I'd done the cladding at approximately the right height. Uh, but the first thing to do was to try and get the batten in place. I started with the batten at the base and that was relatively okay. The tricky thing was just getting it straight because if you did it by eye, looking at where it would go across the walls, that would have actually been really, really not straight at all. So what I had to do was measure against the floor so that at least they were relative to something. And I think I also measured against the ceiling as well to try and just like cross-reference it because it's actually really ridiculously difficult to look at a van roof that probably is kind of curved and not even that's on a slope and then decide what's straight on it it just it just doesn't really work you have to have some kind of reference point to measure against and i'm sure this is why actual proper woodworkers are infuriated by working in vans because they want to make everything square and they have the tools to make things square but the van is so unsquare to begin with that if you actually want to make things square you have to put in a hell of a lot of work to frame everything else out from the metal of the van to get it actually square which is why i just didn't bother with any of the squareness really i just tried to get this relatively level and i think i succeeded actually so it was around here that i realized that i'd forgotten to take into account the fact that the right speaker is going to have to sit under the cupboard i'd put the speaker stands basically as high as i thought i could go and I had measured things, but I, what I hadn't realised was that I needed to measure the height relative to the cupboards, to the base of the cupboards, because they have to go at an angle and sit underneath it. So, yeah, that was a fail. And I got quite worried about moving this and quite stressed by the fact that I'd done it wrong, because the batten that they're screwed into behind the cladding on the bulkhead actually has a bit of a curve in it. So if I had to go too far it's possible that i would just like miss that batten and get myself in a right pickle but as it happened i got quite lucky and i was actually able to reuse some of the screw holes i just kind of took them off and then moved them down to the next place where they would sit basically the same but just a little bit lower and with there i had a little bit of clearance under the cupboards and everything was fine and this, there are a couple of screw holes visible in the wall but i never really noticed them i don't really go looking for that kind of trouble i just look at the nice stuff and ignore all the wonkiness so the next step was probably the hardest bit and that was getting the batten that runs along the ceiling that i would be screwing some of the supports to and this was hard for numerous reasons one being that i couldn't do it on my own in any kind of reliable way but it's also quite hard for my mom to hold things in place against the ceiling it's it's just quite a tricky thing getting the positioning right measuring things to make sure that they were roughly in line and straight and all that jazz was pretty difficult and also the ceiling is of course slightly curved so 
if I just screwed straight in, it would have been at quite a horrendous angle and just caused all sorts of problems. So I had to try and just find a few bits of offcuts and scraps of wood to kind of wedge in there to use as spacers. That was all very haphazard, but actually worked fairly well. It wasn't perfect by any means, but it got things relatively straight and I'm, I'm kind of perfectly happy with how they ended up. Some of the spaces stayed in, some of them have fallen out, but it's all right because they did their job and the baton is nicely in place. I did just one piece of baton that was going to run along the full length of all of where the upper cupboards were going to be just to get it done, dusted in one go, not have to think about coming back to it later and doing more. I'm pretty happy with that decision really. I then started on the base of the left hand cupboards because that's all I was really trying to do at this point. I was just working from left to right and it was going to be like one big piece of plywood but kind of split into two cupboards so they'd have two doors. I wasn't sure at this point whether I'd put anything in between the cupboards to actually separate them or whether they'd just kind of be separated by just a bit of wood on the floor and in the end I didn't separate them any further. Kind of just gives you a bit more space. Yes, they can kind of impede on one another or like things can move between, but it's not really a problem. I think having the extra space is worth it. So I essentially cut out a big rectangle of 12 millimeter poplar ply, which again was a tip that I got from Camper Vibe that poplar is more lightweight than what you normally find and also pretty strong. So it's a bit more expensive, but I did get a fair bit of that which is what I'm using for most of the rest of the build. So to that rectangle, I then screwed a bunch of uh, different bits of supporting batten, basically along both edges, along the front and one in the middle, roughly. Well, they might actually be exactly in the middle because I did, I was, I was measuring stuff. And I remembered to account for the batten at the back. So I basically, to get it right, put a piece of batten along the, the edge of the, of the rectangle and then put the bit that I was actually screwing on next to that so I knew that I had exactly the right width um, and that actually worked out quite well for once yeah you go me and to get this right I basically kept putting it up and just checking that everything fit at various points there, there was a lot of that throughout this process maybe more than was necessary but I, I felt like that was the best way to get to make sure I was doing the right thing kind of every stage just check that things actually fit so once I'd got the support on the ply that's actually the, the shelf, the base of the cupboard. I then worked on framing stuff out from the ceiling and the little metal L brackets that you can get in all hardware stores I def were definitely like super helpful. This I don't know how I would have done it without them. Again, another tip from Camper Vibe and it might not be the most woodworky way to do it, but she used to be a professional. So if they're good enough for her, they're definitely good enough for me. It was still kind of awkward to get everything in place and I had to be really careful about the order of screwing things in to make sure that I had room to actually get the screws into the right place. There was pretty much only one way to do it properly and I can't remember exactly what it is. I don't know if it's going to be picked up on the footage, but I think I had to get everything screwed in in place to the base and then just get it up there and then put in the L brackets up at the top as the last stage. And it was still quite awkward. I think I couldn't get every single screw in, but I had enough for it to be secure. And it, it, it came together and, and, and took shape. And I don't, I don't think it really went that badly to say that it was definitely a lot harder than anything that I'd done so far in terms of woodwork. And then at this point, I decided to do a bit more of the ceiling cladding, like just use up pieces that I had to try and cover up some of the gaps both in and behind the cupboards and above where the bed was going to be uh, because I hadn't gone that far with it yet and I felt like I could I could squeeze another another plank in without too much bother or two I think in some places behind the cupboards but it didn't the the stuff behind the cupboards trying to put more in didn't go so well because I didn't have that many pieces that were very long so there wasn't really anything to support them so they're kind of all just like wonky and wobbly and and weird but they're also always hidden by the cupboard doors, so it doesn't really matter. I could have just left it entirely. Uh, it's just kind of like a toss up. I decided not to really worry too much about that because it was going to be hidden. And I kind of, I know there are better ways to go around the corner at the edge of the ceiling, but I wasn't feeling like that was what I wanted to do for the bits that would be visible anyway kind of wanted to do something with some cloth, not four-way stretch carpet, because I 
just really don't like it. But as it still stands, I haven't done anything really with all of that yet. So it remains an open question to be solved. And that basically takes me to the end of this video because the next thing I do is starting on the control panel and the shelf that sits above it that's in the middle and that kind of deserves to be a video on its own. So sorry for this being a bit bitty. It's basically just the frame for the cupboards and the base and it's only two out of three. So there we go. But hey, I'm trying to cover this chronologically because otherwise it would just become such a hot mess to try and manage. So um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one when we talk about the control panel, which is kind of cool. And uh, yeah. Peace out, hombres. See you later. Taters. See you later. Taters. Yeah. To the tater. T to the A to the T to the...